For more applications of our half angle and double angle identities, I'd like to consider the following situation. If the cosine of theta is equal to negative 4 fifths and theta lies between pi and 3 pi over 2, I'd like to find these four quantities, sine of the double angle, cosine of the double angle, sine of the half angle, and cosine of the half angle. As is typical, the first thing I'd like to do is draw theta. So first thing to do is figure out in what quadrant should I be drawing theta. In this case, we were told flat out that theta lies between pi radians and 3 pi over 2 radians, meaning that this angle will be located in quadrant 3. Now, given that the cosine is negative 4 fifths, I can draw my reference triangle. The adjacent side should be 4, the hypotenuse should be 5, but because we're in quadrant 3, the adjacent side is going to wind up being negative. Now, with those things in mind, you now have two sides of a right triangle labeled. You should try to find the third side. So a squared plus b squared is equal to r squared. We can label a as being negative 4, b we're trying to find and we can label r as 5. I'm guessing by this point you probably already recognized what triangle this is, but it is one of my favorites, the old 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Now when we do take a square root, we will see a plus or minus sign pop up. Given that we're in quadrant 3, should this be positive or should it be negative? In quadrant 3, both of the legs should be negative. So with that in mind, in order to use all of these identities, we need to know the sine of the angle as well as the cosine of the angle. And that's precisely what we'll do. This part is all of the work that you're showing for the process. Everything after this is going to be simply formulas. For example, sine of the double angle. we said is equal to 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. So that's going to be 2 times sine of theta is negative 3 fifths and the cosine of theta is going to be negative 4 fifths. I'm going to treat the 2 as though it's a 2 over 1 so that I can just multiply all the numerators and multiply all of the denominators and be done. 2 times 3 times 4 is 24. 1 times 5 times 5 is 25. Negative times negative is positive, so we are all set. For the cosine of the double angle, we had three different forms of this. One of them is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Since we went through all of the trouble of finding both the sine as well as the cosine, might as well make use of this. For this, we're going to square the negative four-fifths, and we're going to square the oh, excuse me, that should be a negative sign and square the negative three-fifths, and then subtract the results. So four-fifths, quantity squared, will be sixteen-fifths, minus three-fifths squared will be nine-fifths, and subtracting those gives me seven over twenty-five. Excuse me, those should be twenty-fives, not just fives. We're squaring them. <clears throat> now the other thing that this tells me is that for the double angle, because the cosine is positive and the sine is positive, that lets me know that 2 theta is going to be a quadrant 1 angle. Opposite over hypotenuse would be 24 over 25, and the adjacent over the hypotenuse would be 7 over 25. And as is typical, now that we have the sine and the cosine, if we wanted to find the tangent, that would be a piece of cake. Now for the half angle, the sine of the half angle is defined as being plus or minus the square root of 1 minus the cosine of theta all over 2, where the plus or minus is defined by what quadrant theta over 2 is in. We haven't figured out what quadrant theta over 2 is in. Here's how we do so. We were told that theta lies in between pi and 3 pi over 2. What I'm going to do is take half of all of those. That'll let me know where theta over 2 lies. So theta over 2 winds up in the middle. On the left side, we'll see pi over 2. And on the right side, we'll see 3 pi over 4. Pi over 2 would be this angle on the unit circle. And 3 pi over 4 is the angle that splits quadrant 2 in half, which means that our angle is somewhere in between here. 
at the very least, we know that that is going to be in quadrant 2. Now with that in mind, the sign in quadrant 2 should be positive. Keep in mind that when I say quadrant 2, I'm referring to the angle theta over 2, not the angle theta. I'm aware that theta is in quadrant 3. Half of theta will be in quadrant 2. So we'll want the positive square root of 1 minus cosine of theta all over 2. Now to help rationalize this, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of the fraction inside the radical by 5. This will distribute through the numerator and we'll see 5 plus 4 all over 10. So the square root of 9 tenths. The 9 part can be simplified. The rest I'm going to leave as is. Now we're a little low on space, but I think that we can make it work. We'll just need to start all the way over here. For the cosine of theta over 2, we can reuse some of the things that we've already used. This should be plus or minus the square root of. The formula is 1 plus the cosine of theta all over 2. Now again, theta over 2 is in quadrant 2, and I would expect the cosine to be negative in that quadrant. So this would be the negative square root of 1 plus negative 4 fifths all over 2. Then repeating the algebra from the previous example, we'll multiply top and bottom by 5, giving us the negative square root of 5 minus 4 all over 10 better known as negative 1 over the square root of 10. 5 minus 4 would give 1, square root of 1 is 1. In fact, now that we've done this, I can sketch theta over 2 in its happy home in quadrant 2. The cosine was negative 1 over the square root of 10, and the sine was 3 over the square root of 10. So this is what your angle theta over 2 would look like there in quadrant number 2.